All right, welcome back. We're halfway through. Let's finish out our practice prompts. A TV radio talk show talks about a large audience interested in a proportion of those are listening about a drinking age lowering to 18. To find out, he poses the question. So this is a yes or no. Do you think that drinking age should be restricted out of his listeners? Um, some said yes, some said no. Of the 100, 70 said yes. Which of the following conditions about the proportion is violated? Um, at least 10 as large as the sample. So our sample size of 100, 10 times as large as a sample, is it safe to assume that there's a thousand people having opinions? Yes, you know, thousand people. At least 10, you had 70, which is greater than or equal to 10. And that means you had 30 no's, which is also greater than or equal to 10. So there's no violation there. Um, was the data random? And that's the one that's sneaky because we just regularly said anybody could call in. So our answer A has been violated. Um, why? Because that's not random. Uh, that's a convenient sample. Convenient samples aren't random. Okay, 8.7, a 90% confidence interval for mean mu of a population is computed from a random sample is found to be nine plus or minus three. Which of the following could the confidence interval be based on that same data? Okay, so what is happening here? Well, we're using a formula. So I'm just gonna, if, if you wanna do it on another piece of paper, fine. I'm just gonna try to, keep doing it on my piece of paper here. Um, so if you have a little bit of room down here, uh, what am I doing? I'm doing a sample for mean. So if I go to my formula sheet, then I'm doing a point estimate plus or minus. I'm using this formula. All right. So it's my x bar plus or minus t star s of x over the square root of n. Um, so when I look at this, if I do a 90% confidence interval, then my t star, it said, what could it be? So my t star values, um, when I'm doing a 90 or in the range here, see so it's like they go from like 1.9 to 1.6. So my T star when I do a 90% is like a 1.9 to a 1.6 for most values, for most values of it. So what's different when I do a 95% sample? Those same values range from about 2.2 to 1.96. So when I do a 95% confidence interval, it ranges from 2.2 to 1.96. So that's all the difference of the multiplier that is happening. So hopefully you notice if you're gonna multiply by a bigger number when you change from 90 to 95, that's gonna make your margin of error go up. So it can't be less, it can't be the same, but is it going to double it? The answer is no, it's not going to double your margin of error. Notice when you multiply something by two, instead of a number by 1.6, it's not going to double the number. It's, that's not the amount of difference between those numbers. Let's calculate the difference between those numbers. So at very low ends, the difference between those two numbers is 2.2 minus 1.9. So the difference is about 0.3. Now let's look on the lower range. What's the difference between 1.96 when we have very high values, 1.6? The difference is about 0.36. So it looks like by switching from a 90 to a 95, you're just multiplying by a little bit more, like 0.06 more, you see? So, that makes us even more certain of C. Okay. 
Now working on the back, suppose we want to do a 90% confidence interval for the average amount spent on a book by a freshman their first year at a university. The interval has a margin of error of two bucks. Based on last year's book sales, <coughs> excuse me, we estimate the standard deviation amount to be close to three. What were the number of observations? Okay, so standard deviation, 30. So let's look at our formulas. We're definitely calculating things in dollars. So we have mean, what's the average book price? So our standard error is this formula. All right, so going down here to kind of show my work, right? My margin of error is equal to T star S sub X over the square root of N. So what is my margin of error? $2. What's my T star? I don't know, right? I don't know N, so I don't know my degree of freedom. So we assume Z, Z star until we know. So looking at what's Z star for 90, we go back to our table. What's Z star for 90? Z star for 90 is 1.645. So 1.645. It says, we estimate the standard deviation to be 30, so this is 30, and the square root of n. So this is like the bonus question on the test. Not the real questions, but the bonus. So what can we do? We can switch places here. So we have the square root of n is equal to 1.645 times 30 divided by 2. Um, and what can we do now? We can square both sides. So we know that n is equal to all that stuff. So let's do that in a calculator. Uh, parenthesis 1.645, our z star, times 30, our standard deviation, divide by 2. And then we're going to square that stuff. We get 608856. 608856. So I can't talk to 608 people. I gotta bump it up to 609. So what is the closest? If I look at 8.8, .8, they knew it was gonna come down to this and I gotta pick this, not that. They're testing to see if you know when to round up. 8.9, let's take a look. A telephone company SRS of this many adults, so N is one, two, three, four, nice number found 62% were satisfied. So the proportion was 0.62. The, the announced margin of error. So the margin of error was 0 0.03 or 0 0.03. Does the margin of error account for the fact that some of the adults don't have phones? <laughs> no. We talked about this in class. No, the margin of error only includes sample variability. So I would suggest writing that out to help remember that concept. Margin of error um, includes sampling variability. Not other issues with sampling, like sampling design of some sort. Okay, last question. So it says, a Census Bureau reported on the income of Americans saying 90% confident in the median income in all U.S. households is, or was, that, with a margin of error of this. What does this mean? Okay, so this question has a lot to do with the one from before. So... 90% of all households have it in that range? No, that's not what this is saying. Not 90% of all, no. We can be sure that the median income, sure, ooh, that's a problem. We can be sure that the median income for all households lies in this interval? No, we're only 90% confident that the um, mean ends up, we're only, we're not sure, not sure. <laughs> Only 95, 90, excuse me, 90% confident that the interval lies in there, okay? So 90% of the households in the samples interviewed had these incomes. No, that's 
No, that's no. <laughs> we took a single sample. We took a single sample. So what is D? The Census Bureau got a result of 57 plus or minus this using a method that will capture 90% of the time when used repeatedly. That's exactly what we did. So what does that look like? We'll draw a picture, but let's look at E. E states 90% of all possible samples in this sample side would. No, it's merely approximation that it would. So it's merely an approximation that it would. So what does that look like? Once again, if this is your true mu, what is the mean? If that's the truth, and we don't know where it is, but we're saying if we approximate the truth, approximate the truth, approximate the truth, plus or minus uh, $700, plus or minus 700, that we do many, many of these samples, um, then all of these little samples that all these little nets we create, that 90% of them would capture this true mean. Thanks for joining us. Good luck on your test.